What's up, Vapers? Thanks for checking out Daily Vape TV. My name is Nick, and it's that vlog time once again. That's right, this is episode 31 of our Let's Vape vlog series, where we discuss a whole number of different topics affecting our vaping industry that's going on in our world today, and of course, stuff that's going on with me and the channel, etc., etc. So, before we get started here, before we get into any sort of topics, we do have a ton of stuff to talk about today, but I wanted to get your guys' uh, feedback on where you watch the vlog. Where where do you watch these videos? Uh, is it in your living room? Do you watch it on your TV? Do you have a computer room? Or do you just listen to it in the car? Some people I know are known for just putting your, their phone on the little uh, you know stand or something like on their dash and just listening to vlogs in the car because it's like you're hanging out with someone basically. I know personally I like just kind of listening while I'm working, just kind of hear someone else talking in my ear as I'm doing something else. Um, and it's just kind of a, an interesting thing. I want to know where you guys like watching the vlog. Do you watch it at your local vape shop or what? I mean, I'm really curious. So let me know by dropping a comment right down there in the box below. Let's begin with this thing. Let's get started here. Um, as you can probably tell, my voice is still kind of recovering. I've been sick all week long and I haven't been able to get many videos out. Um, I did manage a fresh build Friday this week, but it was kind of... Uh, uh, only the down up or up and close kind of portion. So eh, really wish I got a better one done for you guys. However, I've been feeling like absolute crap lately and I'm still in the recovering stages. So with that, uh, we've got plenty of stuff on the topics today. We've got some news and updates, important advocacy stuff going on. We've got a couple of first impressions in, in there as well, uh, as well as going over, you know, what went on at vape showcase in St. Louis. Um, we've got some shout outs to do as well. And we've got what I've been vaping on, of course. Uh, we've got a beer o'clock segment. I'm excited. Oh my God, you have no idea. I haven't had a beer all week. Uh, then we've got some vape mail to unbox, and I might just have enough time to do a random review at the end. So let's go ahead and get started with this thing. Go ahead and grab your favorite vape, grab a drink, sit back, relax, and let's vape. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're going to be starting off with the only serious topic that we have to talk about in this vlog here, but it is some important advocacy news. It's a developing story, and I really wanted to get your guys' feedback and thoughts right down there in the comments box, so I'm just going to read the post real quick, and then we're going to discuss it a little bit. This is from someone named Kellyanne O'Callaghan. It says here in the post, Hey, Vaping Industries, my name is Kellyanne, and I'm a casting associate with Tiffany Company Casting. I wanted to reach out because we are casting a commercial, and we are looking for men slash women who can do vape tricks. I found the videos online from your store of some pretty amazing talented guys blowing vape rings and such. We would love to have them audition for our project. Easy enough, we can do Skype interviews tomorrow if they or and you are available. Some details of the project, it shoots in LA between 118 to 121. We are holding callbacks in the Glendale area on Thursday 111. This project pays pretty decent Two. If selected to appear in the commercial, principal roles will receive 500 per session based on a 12-hour day. Once the commercial is edited and you make the final cut, you will receive a $3,500 buyout. Backgrounds, uh, background and extras will be paid 200 per session based on a 10-hour day and will receive no buyout. Please let me know. Thank you, Kellyanne, casting associate, blah, 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 blah. So, uh, from what I gather from that, it looks kind of interesting, you know, definitely appealing to vapors, of course, you know, quick buck, you know, all they are looking for is some vape tricks and, you know, 12 hour day. And that's not bad for, uh, some pretty serious potential money there. Now on the flip side of that, uh, there's another screenshotted post. Uh, this is all from the original post by someone named John Cavanaugh, by the way, it says here, uh, the same person, Kellyanne O'Callaghan, uh, posted somewhere else. It says casting an anti-tobacco commercial for the California Board of Health. This is a Los Angeles based commercial. All talent needs to be local to LA. Very poignant and important message. This is a non-union project and it pays pretty decent too. For those interested, shoot me an email. Email. Uh, and then in the actual little 
picture, there's an attached picture below it. It says, we're looking for groups of 13-year-old girlfriends, groups of boy and girl friends 13 years old, real groups of friends 25 to 32 years old, real blue-collar workers 25 to 32, real TSA employees 25 to 32, real groups of friends that are sober 25 to 32. So some really interesting things going on with this one here. It's a very curious case, and I would really love to hear your guys' feedback. Personally, I think it's pretty messed up. Um, seems like Miss uh, O'Callaghan here is playing both sides of the field. She's trying to convince vapors to come on to a uh, an anti-smoking, anti-vaping campaign and kind of tricking them. It's very secretive kind of language. It's kind of roundabout sort of language. No mention of the anti-anything in the vapor-friendly post. And yet here she is on the flip side of that, trying to uh, get people an, into a very poignant and important message for the California Board of Health. Now, uh, I know a lot of the discussion about this topic has been, well, this doesn't say anti-vaping, it says anti-tobacco. That is true. However, California considers vaping as equal to tobacco. They consider it one big thing. Vaping equals tobacco in California. So as far as they're concerned, that is a blanket term to cover everything related to tobacco, vaping, everything. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, I feel like this is a very messed up way to cast some sort of gullible vapors. I mean, obviously the money factor I think would play a big role when it comes to casting people, you know, like, you know, of, of course your average everyday tricker is probably going to see that number, you know, $3,500 buyout and go, wow, that's a really good quick buck for an afternoon of vaping. And as we know, California has paid out millions for these campaigns, you know, with the whole still blowing smoke uh, debacle thing there. Uh, luckily, we have some really talented people on our side. Stefan Didek from Not Blowing Smoke has uh, basically created the anti-version of their anti-tobacco, anti-vaping agenda uh, with the whole Not Blowing Smoke uh, organization thing there. So make sure you go check out the links. I'll have it in the description down there. But I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and anything you have to say about this whole situation. It's just messed up. Personally, I just think the whole thing's messed up and it's very sketchy at the most. So if you're a California, LA-based vapor, don't fall for this. Don't go there. Don't respond to any sort of casting or anything like that. You're doing the industry a disfavor by doing that. Right, so let's get into some first impressions. We have uh, my first one, which is this guy right here, the Fire Luke Mesh Tank, and this is by Freemax Vapor, and yeah, uh, I really like this thing so far. Uh, the flavor on it, since the second I filled it with juice and primed up that coil, has been outstanding. Um, really love the flavor on this one. I am vaping in there currently my own flavor, Blazberry, and I know that like the back of my hand, so I could tell you right off the bat, this thing has excellent, excellent flavor. Um, I find that it wicks really well. I have had zero issues with wicking. I'm currently vaping at about 80 watts right now, and it keeps up nicely. Um, the tank capacity is a bit on the lower side, but it does last, you know, a few hours, which is totally acceptable. And the kicker is it has an 810 drip tip, which is awesome. It does have a wide bore mouthpiece as well to match, and that's just great. Uh, it has this sort of like grid pattern all the way around, which is actually kind of handy when it comes time to refill this thing because it uh, gives you a little bit of grip around the top. But all around, so far so good with the Fire Luke mesh tank. I have really been enjoying it. Um, there's really nothing too horrible I can say about it other than the fact that it comes with a metal drip tip and I'm not a big fan of metal drip tips, but luckily my buddy gave me this uh, dead rabbit drip tip, so problem solved right there. Um, I'm just going to have a couple of rips off of this thing.
clouds and flavor, clouds and flavor. Gotta love it. All right, next one up is the Arc Mod. Now, I will be talking about all these uh, when it comes time to talk about what I've been vaping on. However, I do, do want to give, you know, my initial first reactions from my first week using this device here. Uh, I got this Arc Mod. Uh, Kevin from Vapor Stockroom gave this to me at Vape Showcase in St. Louis. And uh, I'm having a blast with it so far. It feels really, really good in the hand. Uh, it feels like I make this weird comparison to like a bar of soap. It's kind of soft. It has like this soft texture to it and it's very, very comfortable. Um, it has the button right in the middle on the back, smack dab in the middle of the mod, which is a bit awkward. I must say it's not super natural to feel it like that in your hand. I wish the button would be up here somewhere. Uh, however, it's not as bad as I originally thought it was going to be when I first saw this device show up. Um, I thought it was going to be really weird holding onto this thing, but it's not. It's actually pretty decent. Uh, and the shape kind of helps with that as well. Plus it's ambidextrous, you can hold it either way, left-handed or right-handed, and it's gonna feel exactly the same. Um, so there's that. The screen is on the side here and it is full color. It's powered by the VO chipset, which I am fairly familiar with. It's one of those ones that you see pop up every now and then. Um, it has a centered 510 connection, which supports at least up to 25. It's got the uh, Recoil Rebel on top of there right now, which is uh, 25 millimeters, and it fits no problem. I believe you get an extra eh, approximately one millimeter on either side, so I'm going to say 27, 28 pro probably, or somewhere around there uh, is going to fit nice and flush. I will do a, a more extensive testing when it comes time to do the full review, of course. But other than that, the chip itself, uh, the button layout is a little bit funky on the right hand side it goes uh, down in power on the left hand side it goes up in power which is kind of backwards to our normal way of thinking uh, like 99% of other mods on the right side goes up and on the left side it goes down but hey you know whatever we can probably get around that if it weren't for the fact that whenever you take the batteries out it resets your wattage, which is a royal pain in the ass for me. Um, you know, changing your batteries at least once a day and having to reset that power kind of sucks. Really wish they would fix that with a firmware update. And I'm pretty sure, like 98% sure that this thing is firmware updatable. Uh, and with that, there's a lot of these little issues that I have with it uh, would be fixed with firmware. And for those of you that watched our, uh, our my vlog, me and Demo did my unboxing and an initial first reactions to it right out of the box. And we kind of covered a lot of these things here. But the only other thing that I've discovered that I'm not super fond of is the fact that when it goes to sleep after a couple of minutes, the screen will shut off and it goes to sleep. You have to tap the button once to wake it up again and then you fire it. I'm just so used to every other device that I own. You can literally pick it up after days of not using it, hit that fire button, and it just starts going right away. And I'm not sure if that's to save battery life or what, but um, it's just really annoying for me personally. Uh, obviously, these uh, these you know little things that I'm mentioning here won't be uh, as a big deal to everybody out there, but I just find it really annoying compared to some of the other devices that I own. And the last little thing I would say is the ridge right here on the back there's a ridge um, that could probably take off skin it's so sharp so uh, it's not really that big of an issue because your thumb is pretty much always going to be here but if you just so happen to be like rubbing up against it or something like that it's going to uh, <laughs> peel off some skin there possibly if they beveled that edge it would solve it no problem it would take nothing as far as effort as far as you know fixing that issue uh, but yeah I would really like to see them uh, uh, possibly bevel that edge in future versions of this device here or whatnot. But with that, overall, very, very comfortable using this thing. Uh, a little bit better than I was expecting. You know, I, I guess I had sort of kind of low expectations for this one. But so far, uh, the mod is performing well. And uh, I've kind of been enjoying using it. It's very powerful. It goes up to 240 watts on two 18650s, which is kind of inflated, but we'll talk about that again in the full review. Uh, once again, just gonna have a couple rips off of this thing.
And the last thing I wanted to take a quick first impression look at is this thing right here. This is the Nico stick. And I picked this up at Vape Showcase as well. Uh, and it's a nice little pod system. It's a very good form factor. It feels good in the hand. Very, very similar to the Jewel. It's just a little tiny bit thicker with more rounded edges. It's kind of somewhere in between the Jewel and like the MyJet in size and shape and kind of feel. It feels uh, material wise more similar to the Jewel with the metal. And uh, I really like the functionality of it. It works really well. The battery lasts a very long time. I still have yet to charge this thing, so that is definitely a pro for me. The pods last a while too. Uh, again, these are very much based upon the sort of jewel format. They have a very si uh, very similar size and shape as well. Uh, the draw is nice on it, a fairly tight draw, but that's just right for my style of vaping. The good uh, tight restricted mouth to lung is perfect for me. And it has the little N kind of window right there. Hopefully you guys can see the little, little window right there to uh, see where your pod level is at which is great. Unfortunately, the back part is uh, just flat, so it doesn't go all the way through. So it can be a bit difficult to see uh, where your level is actually at, but it's really not a big issue because you can take the pod out and it just clicks right back in. Uh, it is a micro USB charging, which is very convenient. I'm pretty sure everyone has about a dozen of these cables hanging around their house. With that, uh, you can pretty much find a charger for it anywhere, and it's almost practically universal at this point. But the kicker really is this thing right here. This is a little lanyard that you can get for it. This is an optional accessory. Um, and this actually serves as a backup charger. So this thing actually holds power inside of it. And you can actually just kind of, uh, let me line it up here. Yep. Yeah and click it in, boom, you have backup power right here. Now my device is actually charging and you can wear it around your neck, of course, if you wanted to, like so, and there you go. You have a little bit of a backup battery there. You can probably see the little lights on. Yeah, the little lights on, which means it's charging and you can also puff it on the run. So there you go, you can see there. You can uh, puff on this thing as a pass through if you wanted to. And it's got a little micro USB on the little lanyard part as well. So very convenient power bank there for your Nico stick. If you are a hardcore Nico stick addict, then uh, yeah, this will be great for you. You can get all day's worth of power out of this thing. And uh, I'm really digging it so far. The flavors that you get are a little bit different. You get a tobacco, a mint, a mango, and an apple pie. By far, the, my favorite so far is been the apple pie. It's like got that real cinnamon kick to it, which is really different and good. And you don't really see an apple pie flavor too much in the pod systems as far as the closed systems are concerned. So that's definitely a nice little thing there as well. But uh, so far, so good with this thing. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of different pod systems that I'm going to be testing out in uh, the near future. So uh, I already have plans for a round two of the pod system showdown, and there might possibly already be plans for a part three as well. I've got tons of these things. They're super popular right now and I really can't see an end uh, in the foreseeable future to more companies coming out with these sort of pod systems. So there we go. Let's have a couple of puffs on this one now. And to wrap up the news and updates segment for this week's vlog, uh, let's just talk about Showcase a little bit. What went on? What happened? What was the stuff that I may have missed in the vlog, et cetera, et cetera? How was my experience? And possibly some future updates on events as well. All right, so with St. Louis, it was kind of interesting because I was going for my company, Blazzy Liquid, and we had a booth there, so we had to travel with all of our bags, etc. And I was traveling with one of my business partners, Megan, as you saw in the vlog. Hopefully, you guys watched that video as well. But with that, uh, we were traveling together. Our flight was originally booked for 6 a.m. out of Hartford. And uh, on Thursday, the Thursday right before we left, there was an ice and snowstorm. It buried us with about 10 inches of snow and winds, uh, very, very strong winds, which grounded every single flight out of New England and canceled pretty much everything. So our flight got canceled. I was able to rebook for the same day, leaving at 10 a.m. And we showed up to the airport, got on the plane, all safe and sound, backed up from the gate, and our engine was frozen. So unfortunately, we had to deboard, get off the plane, and uh, reschedule our, our connecting flight because we had already missed it at that point. 
but everything got sorted out with American Airlines. I got to show some love for them because they really uh, did a hell of a good job uh, sorting everything out. I'm sure they worked very, very hard that day. Uh, but as far as I know, everyone on Delta flights got canceled all through the weekend. So a lot of people that booked through Delta were unable to attend Vape Showcase in St. Louis, for, especially, you know, from our area and, you know, throughout the Northeast. So that was kind of a big bummer. I was looking forward to seeing some of my friends that I don't get to see all the time there. And uh, that was just kind of a, a shame that they weren't able to make it. But as far as my trip was con concerned, we got there about 7.30 p.m., and we went straight to the 3D Vapor party, the pre-party sort of thing. Met up with a whole bunch of people that I haven't seen in a long time and just, you know, went around the room giving hugs and, you know, just kind of greeting everybody, getting ready for the weekend to come. And that was really cool. We only stayed for a little while, but that was just a nice little warm-up sort of pre-party. Um, went back to the hotel and uh, waited around for Demo. Demo actually showed up around 10.30 p.m. By then, we were already just kind of chilling in the lounge at the bar and meeting up with more people. Everyone's kind of having dinner or late night snack and it was just a nice warm kind of fuzzy atmosphere you know everyone was having a good time just you know seeing each other again is like the best thing for conventions and it was a lot of fun that night. That was a really good night for me. After that, you know, the show the next day, we had to set up our booth early because we had missed our opportunity on Friday night to do so because the, the hall actually closed at like 8 p.m. or something. So we weren't able to get in to set up our booth. So we got in a little bit early that day and pretty much for the next like, you know, six, seven hours or so, I was manned at the booth. I was there working hard, you know, selling blaz, talking to people, hanging out. And, you know, uh, I did a little bit of filming on the first day and uh, we got to uh, sit down with Demo and do a little, um, little vlogging, which was great. Uh, but other than that, you know, Pretty much the whole first day was spent uh, working hard, but uh, the show was good. There was a lot of people there. The vibe was very positive. It wasn't the biggest show in the world, and it was a little bit uh, out of the way, I guess. I mean, the show was called uh, Vape Showcase St. Louis, but it was actually in... Belleville, Illinois, uh, across the Mississippi. So we had to cut through East St. Louis on our way there. And the commute was actually probably the most interesting part because it was a pretty, you know, sketchy neighborhood, I, I guess, to say the least. No offense to anyone from East St. Louis, but it was definitely a little bit sketchy. I felt a little bit out of place. And um, yeah, we saw some interesting things on our way there. Um, there was a, like a homeless guy with one leg and he just stared at us as we were sitting at a stoplight. So we kind of booked it out of there as quick as possible, but I, and I know uh, Demo kind of said the same thing on Vape Stew on Friday. Uh, he, he was driving around in a Land Rover all weekend, and it was uh, him and his buddy driving around a Land Rover. They just f fell out of place and had a, an interesting commute as well. So I don't know. It was, a, it was an interesting time. Um, everyone was super nice there. I love the, you know, all you guys out there coming up to me and saying hi and shaking my hand and, you know, all that good stuff. I absolutely love meeting you guys at these shows. So I really look forward to going to more events to get out to different parts of the country and meet you guys. So just, I wanted to thank you guys again for showing all the love. I really do appreciate everything. As far as the second day is concerned, it was pretty, it went by super quick. Honestly, it went by super duper quick. Uh, not as much foot traffic. There was a, a risk of like an ice storm that day on the, uh, on the Sunday. And uh, it was kind of dry for the first half of the day. And then it started raining and then it was kind of crappy out. So people probably kind of tended to stay home that day. I'll be honest with you. But uh, the traffic was all right. It was a decent turnout uh, overall. It was one of the smaller shows, so I wasn't really expecting, you know, ECC 2015 levels of people there or anything like that. But overall, I'd say it was a good show considering the circumstances in the Northeast, my part of the country, and from all over the place, you know, uh, traveling can be a hassle, a big time hassle. And it definitely was no exception for this show here, but as far as I'm concerned, we made it safe and sound, and uh, I really didn't have that much of an issue with it, and I just can't wait for the next one already. I mean, they've already scheduled the Atlanta show, so hopefully I get to that one, but I can't really guarantee anything at this point. As far as future shows goes, um, 
you know, I'm definitely going to be at ECC next month, February 9th through the 11th. I'll be there, uh, me, Demo, Grim Green, and I'm sure a whole bunch of other people as well. Trying to get uh, Stu from, or Stan from Vape Stu out there as well. Hopefully we can meet up everybody and just kind of do some uh, some funny videos or whatever. But uh, ECC is, is looking pretty good for me right now. And uh, next thing after that is... Uh, National Vape Expo in uh, Connecticut at Foxwoods Resort Casino. Definitely going to that. That's my hometown show. It's only about an hour away from me, and I'm really looking forward to that one. Uh, just kind of my New England family getting all together again and causing a ruckus in a casino. But uh, after that, future's kind of uncertain. I know there's uh, Midwest Vape Expo coming in April. I'm going to try to make it to, out to that one, but again, no guarantees at this point, but I would absolutely love to get out there again. This time it is in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. I don't think I've ever been to Cleveland, so I would love to co go and visit um, just to hang out with you guys. So anyways, uh, yeah, that's pretty much my vape showcase wrap up and uh, my news and updates wrap up. Let's go ahead and move on. All right, guys, it's time for some shout outs. I got to show you guys some love. And uh, if you want a shout out for yourself, just write me an email, dailyvapetv at gmail.com, and I will be sure to shout you out in one of the next vlogs. With that, just make sure you tell me a little bit about yourself or what you want me to talk about or anything like that. Also, just let me know if it's cool to say your name or not. Uh, some people are a little bit sketched out with their name all over YouTube. But with that, just make sure you put that somewhere in the email, and I will be sure to follow your directions. But with that, we've got a couple of shout Shoutouts today. The first one goes to Sammy Loosley. This says, my name is Sam Loosley, relatively new vapor, around six months and already heavily into my RDA and RTA building and experience. After smoking for 16 years, and in quotes it says, and I'm 28, I will never go back. By far you are becoming my favorite reviewer. Fresh Build Friday series has helped me progress at a very fast rate in my building, mastering the Fuse Clapton, Staggered Clapton, Hive Coils, Aliens, and more in two months. Um, it says, I can't thank you enough for your efforts. I'll keep you posted on progress. And as you mentioned in the new year video, more basic build videos would be awesome. Respect dude and vape on big shout out to you, Sammy. Thank you so much for writing in. Really do appreciate it. Big shout out to you. Good luck on your progress with your future builds and all that stuff. And be sure to let me know. And I mean, if you want to update me in the future on some builds, send me some pictures or whatever, tag me on Instagram anything like that. I'd love to see your builds. Anyways, moving on to our second shout out today. We have Jacob Quinney. It says, G'day mate. I'm Jake Quinney from beautiful bleep Australia. And I would absolutely love a shout out a bit about me. I've been vaping a few months now and I love it. I lost my mom to lung cancer on the 3rd of March and your videos have helped me cope with life, man, dude, that that is crazy, man. Uh, that I can't even imagine what it feels like. Um, honestly, like just to, I, I hate to take it down a notch here, but I really can't even imagine what that's like for you. And I'm so sorry for your loss, you know, condolences. And, um, I'm just really glad to, to see you coping and see you moving on and kind of like making it day by day. Uh, and if I bring you that little bit of joy during the day, then that makes me feel good as well. So just, oh man, that's just crazy. And you know, if everyone out there that's ever lost someone to any type of cancer for that matter, you know, you know how difficult it is to see, you know, see them just kind of, um, see them go like that. You know, it's just not fair, you know, but hopefully we can all just kind of come together as one and just agree that, you know, cancer is like the worst thing ever. <laughs> I've lost family members to cancer and I have had family mem members survive cancer. And I know seriously, like how difficult it is just, you know, getting through, uh, getting through day by day. And, um, yeah, it's just not fun. It's not a fun situation, but I mean, if I if I can bring you any sort of consolation and kind of like the ability to cope with life and just kind of distract you for a period of time, then that's that's definitely a good thing. So, man, 
I'm sorry to bring the video down like that, guys. We will carry on here. It says, um, I'd like to say a shout out to a good friend of mine who has helped me with the basics of vaping, Michelle Kazenkow. Um, I hope I pronounced that right. I'm sorry if I don't pronounce last names right, but uh, it says vape on fam. Um, Jacob, seriously, big shout out to you. You're a trooper. You're carrying on and, you know, I really hope that, uh, you know, you continue to enjoy my videos and everything. Big shout out to you, man. Seriously. Uh, it means the world that you guys write these emails too. Seriously. I'm like, I'm like getting emotional right now, but thank you so much for writing in. I really do appreciate it. That moving on, we have our next one. It says, Amej Azmanadgik. Oh man, Amej, I'm sorry if I, oh geez. Told you I'm terrible at last names, man. Oh, man. It says, hi, hey, I'm Emej. I'm from Europe, and I went to Dallas. I met you there, and like, you're the coolest dude I have ever met. <laughs> I don't think that's true, but okay, thank you. Um, it says, I really appreciate the videos you make, especially Fresh Build Friday. I hope you make another Fresh Build week. Um, it's possible. I will definitely think about that for this coming year sometime, but... Um, that's to be determined as well. It says, I would, uh, I would be really happy if you could give me a quick shout out on your YouTube channel for my Instagram account. Uh, the account is at ohm underscore tricks with an X. Uh, I'll put it up on screen right now. And uh, I wish you everything the best in 2018. So, Amej, big shout out to you and your Instagram. That is ohm underscore tricks on Instagram. Make sure you check them out. I'll put uh, the, put it on screen once again. There you go. You're on screen twice. Thank you for writing in. Really do appreciate that. Uh, the next one is from Demo Vapes, actually. So Demo, hey, uh, make sure you go check him out, of course. He says, hey, man, I love uh, it. Love, love it if you'd shout out my fiance, Cassandra. She's my rock and is amazing, and I love her to death. Oh, Demo, that is so sweet. Cassandra, you have been shouted out by me, uh, even though Demo is working his ass off, doing his own thing, and one day I hope to get a shout out on his channel. So big shout out to you, Cassandra, and I wish you guys the best of luck in the future there. Big shout out to you, Demo, as well. Love you, buddy. And the last and final shout out that I have for this week is from Addie Kincaid. This one says, uh, could you do me a solid and give a shout out to my boy, Robert Frazier at Vape HQ and Grantham. He's the new manager at my local vape store, top bloke doing a cracking job of bringing the store up to standard. One of the best in my hometown here in the UK. Cheers, bro. Uh, Addy, yeah, big shout out to you, first of all, for writing in, and also big shout out to Robert Frazier at Vape HQ. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys also for shouting other people out with your shout outs as well. I love that. I love the whole community aspect. You know, you guys are not just looking out for yourselves, you're looking out for your fellow vapors as well. So, that is just an awesome thing. Um, so, to Sammy, Jacob, Ahmed, Demo and Addy, you guys are all shouted out, and thank you guys so much for writing in once again. And just to reiterate, if you guys want to shout out for yourself, write me an email, dailyvapetv at gmail.com, and I'll get to your shout out as soon as I possibly can in one of the future vlog episodes. And with that, just let me know a little bit about yourself or your story or who you want me to shout out, as well as let me know if you want me to use your full name. So uh, let's go ahead and move it right along. All right, guys, it's time to go over what I've been vaping on this past week. And I have a bunch of different setups this week. Um, a lot of kind of mishmash sort of things going on here. Um, kind of random uh, combinations of mods and tanks and RDAs and that kind of thing. But uh, some interesting stuff in here. So let's go ahead and carry on with this. First up, we have the Ruby 270 Dragon Edition. Um, I didn't get much of a chance to use this before I left for Vape Showcase. And I've been using it all week and I gotta say I'm loving it this thing is great um, I absolutely love the mech power and the coils that I'm using in this are my buddy uh, Jimmy Clark coil image uh, on Instagram make sure you check out coil image on Instagram he made me some frame staples for this thing and I'm absolutely loving them 
Uh, but yeah, Jimmy has been doing really good work. He is an admin on my uh, Facebook group, uh, the Daily Vape TV Cloud Crew. So big shout out to uh, you, Jimmy, for that. And thank you for the coils. Um, the juice that I'm rocking in this one today is da cake batter dough from North Shore Vapor. A uh, couple of local guys, they're doing great things. We sell a hell of a lot of this stuff at my store, and it's just good. It tastes just like it says. It's just cake batter. It's Funfetti cake and a little bit of that icing flavor as well. Kind of that vanilla-y thing going on, but oh my god, it's so good. If you're in the mood for a dessert flavor, then absolutely check out either Dat Cake Batter Dough or Dat Sugar Cookie Dough. That's really good stuff. So let's go ahead and have a rip off this thing. Next up, we've got something I talked about a little bit earlier. This is the Fire Luke mesh on top of the Wismec RX2 21700. And it's kind of, this tank has been all over the place. It's been on several different devices over the past week, but this is the one that I'm rocking it on today. And I absolutely love it. Right now, 79 and a half watts, uh, rocking my Blazberry on the inside there. Gotta show some love for my own line here, Blazberry. It's refreshing, it's sweet, but not too sweet. Kind of got that candy slushy thing going on, and it's just good. It's just an all day vape for me. I love the fruity flavors. It's very just fresh tasting and ah, I can vape bottle after bottle of this stuff There's really not much else I could say about it that I didn't say in my little first impression So I'm just gonna go ahead and have a puff off this one. Oh Yeah, can't get enough of that one. Absolutely not um, Next up we have uh, another kind of mishmash thing this this RDA has been kind of making its rounds on all my Latest and greatest mods. This is the vape fly mesh plus RDA First impressions of it are fantastic. Uh, I've been using this a lot and I've been using it at 94 to 100 watts right around that area. I'm using mesh at 94 watts. Yes, you heard me correctly. Um, I never thought I would vape mesh that high, um, but the resistance of this particular coil, this is just the Canthal, I want to say. The Canthal comes out to 0.09, and that's kind of why I'm rocking it on this thing here. It was kind of floating back and forth between 0.1 and 0.09. Uh, right now it's sitting at 0.09, so uh, it's currently sitting on the Vupu 2, and uh, the Vupu 2 can fire down to 0.05, so that is why it's living right here. But this mod, very powerful, very uh, very good to handle your low builds. If you've got like a build that you normally would rock on a dripper, you could definitely put it on top of the Vupu 2 and have some regulated power behind it. Uh, I'm sitting at 94 watts, like I said, vaping on some of this Nashi V2 by Juice Guys. Oh my god, I can't get enough of it. Of it. It's an Asian pear and caramel, and oh my god, it's so good. It's a very natural tasting pear flavor. The caramel in it is sweet, and it just kind of coats your tongue and just leaves that really nice aftertaste. It's so good. I really highly recommend this one. Uh, and I'm not the biggest dessert flavor vapor. This is kind of crossing that, that boundary between fruit flavor and dessert flavor. So for me, this one's top notch. Uh, I just need to have a vape real quick off of this one. Yes, that was mesh at about 100 watts. Yep, so, <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. Um, moving on, we have the Arc mod with the Recoil Rebel, like I talked about earlier. Really not going to get into a whole heck of a lot of detail. Uh, I think I just slapped some Coilology fused Claptons or frame staples on here. I can't remember. Uh, but, yeah, it's performing well. Um, I'm sitting at 88 watts right now on this one, and real no rhyme or reason to it whatsoever. I could probably rock it a little bit higher. The coil's come out to 0.2 ohms, but uh, I find that the sweet spot for the flavor that I'm vaping is right around the 88 mark uh, with the airflow wide open. And that flavor is Smeech. Yeah, uh, big shout out to Chris from Cyquid. He gave me a couple more bottles of this Smeech, and I am in heaven right now because it's one of my all-time favorite peach mango flavors. Um, you know, I just thought of something today, actually. It totally reminds me of one of my Former, not former all-time favorites, but uh, kind of along the same level, which is Shock and Awe by Cold Fusion Juice. I did a review on that way back in the day when I was still a noob. Um, 
But I did a review on that after I met those guys at the first event that I ever went to, which is VCC New England. And uh, that was a peach mango flavor as well. And oh, I cannot get enough of this stuff. I can't, I couldn't get enough of Shock and Awe. And I'm just feeling that same sort of nostalgic uh, feeling when it comes to this stuff here. So once again, just got to have a vape off of this one. And the last full mod setup that I've got today is this guy right here. Uh, this is a ginormous tank called the Dooley. This one's by Vaporgate. Uh, Yosh gave this to me at Vape Showcase, and I've been using this a lot all week. Uh, I've got it on top of the Ravage 230 by Wismec, and this Ravage 230 has definitely been through the ringer. It's got uh, some wear and tear on it from, uh, from Showcase. Uh, definitely... Uh, I wasn't too gentle on it, let's put it that way. But uh, as far as the dually tank is concerned, 7 mil juice capacity, currently rocking the X4 V8 coil in here, or T8, TF V8, X4, sure. We'll go with that. Um, uh, coil on there right now, and it's doing quite well, I gotta say. Performance-wise is uh, definitely... Uh, acceptable, if not a little bit above par for me personally. I uh, can't wait to try this thing out with the Cleto 120 coil because I absolutely love the Cleto 120 and uh, this tank actually solves a couple of the issues that I had with it, so therefore uh, this one kind of ranks a little bit above it in my book uh, as far as my general first impressions goes about it, but so far so good with this tank. The filling system is pretty easy. It's got an air outlet as well, which makes it really nice. And uh, especially when you have something with a uh, like a needle tip to it, like uh, one of these unicorn bottles here. Speaking of needle tip unicorn bottles, I've got this flavor right here given to me by the guys from North Shore. This is icing on the flake, once again by North Shore Vapor, and it is a frosted flakes flavor. I have never enjoyed cereal vapes, ever. I've never been into them uh, until I found this one here. Uh, this is starting to change my mind, I gotta say. Uh, never thought I'd be a sort of corn flavor vapor either, but you get a corn flavor with this one and you get a sweet flavor with this one. I feel like they have like some of that icing flavor from the cake batter and just put that on top of some corn flavor and boom, you got frosted flakes right there. And it's a very sort of simple kind of basic flavor. It does have a bit of like cream to it or milkiness, kind of like the milk at the bottom of the a bowl of cereal. And uh, I've really been digging it, I gotta say. Never thought I'd be into a flavor like this, honestly, but uh, I've gone through about half the bottle so far. So uh, yeah, I think I'm liking it. So <laughs> let's go ahead and have a couple of rips. So the coil that's in here is a 0.16 and I'm rocking it about 90 watts right now. So uh, definitely a good high wattage tank for all you high wattage vapors out there. Uh, and the only other thing I really have to talk about is the Nico stick. Uh, this has been in my pocket all week and it's kind of been my companion. Uh, I've been using this kind of seeing how I like it compared to like the Jewel or like the Fix. And so far it's performing quite well. Uh, the battery life is stellar on it, like I mentioned. And, uh, you know, it's been a good little sort of not jewel substitute, but jewel companion. You know, we'll say jewel companion. I've got the mint flavor in here right now, and it's okay. Uh, we'll talk about more, more of that uh, in the full review. But as far as, you know, my quick fix of nicotine, this is definitely doing the trick. So those are the setups that I've been rocking this week, and now it's time for my favorite part of the vlog. You guys know what time it is. It's my favorite part of the vlog. It's beer o'clock. Yes, that's right. It's time to drink some beer. And this week we've got something a little special. This one is brought to you by my good buddy, Dan Waterman. Big shout out to you, Dan, for gifting me this week's beer and uh, possibly some other beers in the future as well. He gave me a bunch of beers that are from some local breweries. Uh, this one is from a company called Cold Creek Brewery out of Ellington, Connecticut. I've never 
never had their beer before, so I really don't know what I'm getting into. But we had a good little conversation about uh, kind of the style that I've, I'm going to be drinking today, which is a Saison. Uh, it's a Saison. It's 8% alcohol by volume. This one's called Melody with Peaches. And he said it's a very peachy sort of kind of citrusy Saison. It's got a little bit of sourness as well, and I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, I think the extra special thing is, well, I'll just have to show you. I'm just going to bring the can slowly into frame. Are you guys ready for this? Boom. That is a can of beer. Yeah, this thing is absolutely massive. It's the size of my head. I mean, look at this thing. This is a quart of beer. This is a quart of delicious hoppy goodness. And I'm, I can't wait to get into this one. Oh, so yeah, let's go ahead and check this one out real quick. Um, before we do that, first of all, I wanted to just say, if you guys are on the untapped app, uh, make sure you add me. My username is vaping beer geek, all one word. I'd love to see what you guys are drinking on and I'd love for you to see what I'm drinking on and I'll cheers you guys as well. So make sure you add me on there if you have the untapped app. And if you don't, you should get it because it's a great way to keep track of what you're drinking and uh, what you think of certain beers. If you tend to forget like I do. So let's go ahead and check out their website real quick and see if we can get a little bit of an insight on this one. It says, Cold Creek Melody with Peaches, the first in our series of fruity saisons. Lots and lots of peach with a touch of sourness that hides its 8% 8 uh, 8 ABV well. So, all right, uh, this is a little bit uh, higher in the alcohol rating here, 8%, uh, but it's definitely not the highest I've ever drank. Uh, and with, with that, it's probably the highest saison, however. So, no more talking. Let's go ahead and crack this baby open. Oh. Oh, I made a mess. All right. Hold on. Time out. Vape rag. Okay. There we go. Got a little, got a little dribble going on. All right. I just want to hold it with two hands. I just want to hold it like this. And I, I know I'm blocking my mic right now, but I just want to hold it like this and just savor it. Okay. So right off the bat, I get a nice heavy smell of peaches. It smells like peach juice. It really does. It smells just like peach juice. Yeah, it tastes like peach juice. This is kind of weird already. I mean, I'm not going to pour it into a glass. I'm just going to drink it right out of the can uh, because I just like holding the can. So we're just going to do that. So let's go ahead and have a sip. Okay. Yeah, this is different. I've never had anything quite like this. It's not quite a sour. It is a bit sour, but not overly sour. It kind of has that like little bit of earthiness to it, like you would expect from like a farmhouse or a Saison. This one definitely has a sort of identity crisis. It doesn't really know what direction it wants to go in, which I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's definitely no like bitter IPA. It's no super sour and it's not super earthy and dry like a normal Saison farmhouse kind of style beer. Uh, but the peach flavor is fantastic. Wow. Let's have another sip. Yeah, that peach flavor is by far my favorite thing about it. The aftertaste to it is on the drier side. It's it, like the sweetness dies really quickly on your tongue, which is kind of odd. And it's not like super overly like effervescent. It doesn't really like have that super bubbliness to it, which is weird. Um, I kind of expected a little bit more of that, to be honest with you, kind of like, I feel like sours tend to have a little bit more on the, like of the bubble factor. Uh, but this one here is kind of like drier, leaves a dry kind of feeling. And once it hits your stomach, you get that alcohol kind of burning sensation going on. You know what I mean? Um, but it's not a bad thing. It's definitely not a bad thing. It's, uh, it's rather enjoyable actually, but I think the star of the show for this one, for me personally, is the peach flavor. And you guys already know what I'm going to pair it up with. It's going to be Smeech. I mean, I know I say I like to counterbalance and this and that, but I feel like vaping Smeech and drinking this beer would just be heaven. So let's go ahead and pair this one up. Yep, just like I thought, totally heaven for me personally. Um, the sweetness of the vape definitely brightens up the bitterness and dryness of the beer. 
uh, it kind of fills in the gaps. It definitely fills in the gaps. I feel like um, you get more of a, a sweet on the inhale when you vape it, and then you get like that dryness uh, kind of dissipates faster, and that like mouth feel kind of dissipates faster with that lingering sweetness from the vape on your tongue. So really interesting, really unique kind of flavor experience. Uh, I kind of want to try this actually with the Nashi V2 because I'm curious in how well the pear is going to play with the peach. So let's go ahead and try this one. So I feel like this pairing is definitely different. It's a totally different flavor experience. You do get more of the dryness factor to the beer because of the caramel. And I don't know why, but I just feel like that's a thing with this one here. The, the pear is very, very muted when you drink the beer because that alcohol kind of kills off that pear flavor. Pear tends to be a lighter flavor, so you don't really get a whole heck of a lot of it to begin with. But I feel like the peach and the, the sourness and, and like that uh, almost bitterness to it kind of kills off that pear. And you're left with just kind of like this little bit of caramel. So not the greatest pairing in the world, but it is a totally different and unique flavor experience. And like I said, it's just different. So it depends on kind of what you're looking for. If you want that kind of drier, Saison sort of farmhouse-y sort of flavor, then that would be a better pairing. But if you're looking to sweeten it up and kind of counteract the whole alcohol bite thing, then you could do something a little bit sweeter like the Smeech, so uh, more of a matching than a pairing. Uh, but like I always say, I like to kind of switch it up a little bit. I like to kind of just try different things, and uh, yeah, both of these kind of work in their own different, unique sort of way. Anyways, I've got a big-ass beer to finish here, so don't mind me. I'm just going to drink this thing, and then we'll carry on. All right, guys, I've got some vape mail in this week and I am ready to unbox it. Uh, I've tried really hard to not cheat and not look at the invoices or anything like that. But with that, they're all from DHL, which means they're coming straight from China. And let's just go ahead and see what we got. Our first one today, boom, right there. Um, yeah, it's really light. So let's go ahead and tear into it here. Man, these DHL bags. I swear they're made of like adamantium or something. Well, the yellow packing tape of quality, just to let us know that uh, someone has peeked inside before I, and uh, let's just go ahead and rip into this thing. Okay, bubble wrap, oh yeah. Lots of bubble wrap, more bubble wrap. Okay. Oh, all right, all right. What do we have? This is the Vladin. This is a Vladin pod system. And uh, I forget who sent this one to me. I forget whether it's Heaven's Gifts or if it's, uh, oh, I can't remember, Gear Best or something. Obviously, there'll be a full review and I'll give the proper credit where credit's due. But. Let's just go ahead and peek inside here real, real quick, real quick. Uh, let's see, it does come with a pod. So yes, we can just take a couple of puffs real quick for you guys. Oh, it's a really interesting shape. It's got like the, it's like almost like a hurricane logo or uh, symbol, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm assuming it's a tobacco flavor. Oh, that's pretty easy. All right, very stylish, very, very stylish, uh, very, kind of comfortable to hold, uh, very like contoured, if that makes any sense. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I don't think it says what the flavor is supposed to be on here. Uh, I'm kind of getting like a, almost an RY4. It's kind of like a sweeter tobacco, maybe. Not bad though, micro USB charger, uh, draw is good, um, shape is nice, interesting, very lightweight. Yeah, we'll go and do full testing on that thing and we'll get back to you when it's time. So next up, ooh, this one's a little bit heavier. 
a little bit weightier here. Let's go ahead. Let's see what we got. Ah, there we go. This one's heavy. What is this? Let's go ahead and get our trusty scissors here. I love the uh, the Chinese writing on there too. Does anyone uh, read Chinese? Can you tell me what that says? I'd love to know. All right. Oh, we have two things here. A couple of things. There we go. We have Davpo uh, V E V C E. I'm not sure what this is called. Let's see. I remember getting the email about this one though. Uh, this is the variable voltage mod, the new variable voltage mod from Davpo. Uh, yeah, been looking forward to this one actually. Um, I like seeing variable voltage mods because it kind of takes me back. It definitely takes me back to a simpler time. Yeah, screw it. We'll open one of these things right now just because, just because we can. I just want to see what it looks like actually, so I'm kind of interested. But uh, I won't be like putting a tank on it or anything. Yep, 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 bunch of stuff there. These things are kind of weighty. They definitely have some weight to them. And okay, it, and it doesn't even have batteries in it. It's a dual 18650, it looks like. Looks like dual 18650. Um, has this like little rubberized part here, which is kind of nice. A lot of like venting, very, very like nice looking. Uh, <laughs> looks like an on and off and an up and down. That's pretty much it. And a fire button and a 510. Um, looks like it could support probably 25 or 26 millimeter addies. Very simple, good hand feel. Yeah, decent looking device. I'll just give you guys a quick little, quick little look here so you guys can see. There you go and the battery door at the bottom with a little rubberized backing thing there. Pretty nice, pretty cool looking. Definitely gonna dive into that one this week. And uh, like I said, if you wanna see me do a, like a little first impression, let me know right down there. Last but not least, we have another DHL bag, the mighty DHL bag. Oh, two things again, let's see. What is this? What is this? QIU 200 watt. Not sure. Oh, oh yeah, I did see this before. Uh, Sanso, Sanso QI2 or QIU 200 watt. This looks uh, like very, very familiar to me. This looks kind of like the, um, what is it? Tesla YU mod, whatever that one was called. Uh, wow, it's really difficult to pronounce, but uh, yeah, I know a lot of my UK friends got their uh, their YU mod or whatever it was called by Tesla. And uh, that's this is kind of like modeled after that one. Very, very similar. Let's just open one of these up. Uh, I will be giving one of these away since they are identical and I got two of them. So I will be doing a giveaway for one of these uh, whenever I do the review of this one. But this is a dual 18650, 200 watt mod. Nothing super out of the ordinary, I guess. But yeah, I mean, you guys can tell just by taking a look at this thing. It was definitely inspired by the uh, YU. I, if I'm pronouncing that wrong, I'm sure I'm going to hear it right down there in the comments. But hey, it is what it is. It has a, a very plasticky feel uh, upon f initial inspection of this thing. Um, but it has a really interesting look to it. I've never seen anything quite like it. Oh, wow, yeah. Uh, it's not quite rubberized or texturized, but it has a very interesting feel. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. It feels interesting. Um, but yeah, pretty simple little device. Uh, battery door, yeah, battery door on the back. If I can get it off. Okay, there it goes. Yeah, battery door on the back, very plastic, very, very, very plastic. Very, very, very plastic, very like simple, small screen, nothing to write home about there. This is like the plasticky, 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 plasticky mod. Wow, it is featherweight though. This thing weighs like nothing. And that's it. That is all I got this week for vape mail. Um, 
again, anything you guys want to talk about in the comments, whether you want to know about something in particular or you want to see something in particular on next week's vlog, just let me know in the comments section below and I'll be sure to get to that. But that does it for vape mail for this week. And just to cap off this week's vlog, we're gonna do a random review. Yes, we have a random review today of this one right here, Icing on the Flake. Now, you guys saw this in my vlog. I talked about it earlier when I was talking about what I'm vaping on, but um, I feel like reviewing this one because this is something out of my comfort zone. This is something that I'm not used to. I love, love, love fruit flavors of all different kinds. And this is something that is so far out of my wheelhouse, it's not even funny. But I feel like I should talk about this one a little bit more and, uh, you know, just basically explain to you guys what I'm getting out of it. So, like I said, I've got this loaded up in the Dooley. Been vaping on it all week on this same coil here. And I'm, I'm fairly, fairly familiar with the flavor by now. And uh, yeah, so specs wise, it's a 0.16 ohm coil, vaping at 89.6 watts, 3.79 volts. And uh, yeah, the coil's mm, in pretty decent shape still. Uh, so yeah, I think I can get a pretty good representation of this flavor. Uh, I have not tried it on a dripper yet, but I will. And I can tell you right now, it's probably gonna be probably better on a dripper than it is from a tank, uh, but it is pretty darn good out of a tank from my experience. All right, let's go ahead and take a few puffs off of this one and we'll talk about it. All right, so I wanna know how many of you woke up on a Saturday morning when you were a kid and just scarfed down bowl after bowl of frosted flakes. I know I've been there for sure, and this just brings me right back to that point in my life. Saturday morning, man, this is exactly what this flavor reminds me of. It's a delicious corn kind of flavor, which is very like natural tasting. I'm kind of surprised by how actually like accurate and natural this flavor actually is to me personally. Uh, the icing flavor on there is just right. It's on point in my opinion, and uh, it tastes just like Frosted Flakes. I was gonna say Corn Flakes. It tastes just like Frosted Flakes. It's sweet, but not overly sweet. I know the uh, manufacturer, actually, him and I were talking a little bit about this flavor. He said it's obviously inspired by, you know, other people's attempt at making a Frosted Flakes flavor, but they tended to be too sweet. And I totally agree with them there on that fact. And I totally agree that this one is just the right amount of sweetness. It is a sweet flavor. It is a really sweet flavor, but is it's not a nose running, eye-watering sort of sweet that you're gonna get bored of and sick of after a tank full. This one, I can vape tank after tank of and not really get sick of it, honestly. I mean, I do rotate flavors quite often, uh, but this one is uh, has been in my rotation all week long and I'm still not sick of it at all. I can still go many, many more tanks. Um, and it's just a good flavor. It's just one of those good, wholesome, traditional sort of kind of flavors that you just want to vape, you know? Comparing this to other cereal flavors that I've tried in the past, I mean, like I've said time and time again, I'm not a huge cereal vapor, but this one here is is different, you know? It's not your traditional Fruit Loops flavor. It's not your traditional Crunch Berries flavor. This is just an attempt at something a little bit different and a little bit, uh, more niche -y. you know, it's got that little niche that it fits into that some people are absolutely gonna go nuts over, but the general population is probably gonna go, eh, I don't wanna vape Frosted Flakes, but I really would recommend you guys try this one out just because it's a very unique flavor, it's a very tasty flavor. Um, I, I feel like a lot of people could get behind this one if they actually try it for themselves. And I mean, it's 100 mil of good juice, so why wouldn't you? And I know there's a coupon code out for it right now, which I'll put in the description below down there. I hope uh, it's still active by the time this video goes out. I'll try to make sure that uh, that happens for you guys. But with that being said, uh, I'm going to have a couple more vapes on this one uh, before we sign out.
So as a primarily fruit flavor vapor, this is me saying icing on the flake would be great for anyone just looking for this type of flavor. It's not gonna appeal to everyone out there, but I would highly recommend you guys try this one out just to say you did, just to try it out and give it a shot. And I really do think you guys will enjoy this one. So that about does it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more videos just like this. Don't forget to click that notification bell right next to the subscribe button if you wanna be alerted whenever I upload videos. Big shout out to you guys and the notification squad for getting here early. Also, leave me some comments in the box below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on any of the topics that we discussed in this week's video. Don't forget to check out the advocacy and my social media links right down there in the box below. Make sure you join my Facebook group, Daily Vape TV Cloud Crew, of course, link right down there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and as always, vape on!